Welcome to Creative Coding with TypeScript. This is part 4. If you haven't seen the previous videos, there are links in the description. If you are new to this channel, I make videos of how to create art with code using TypeScript. TypeScript is a programming language for the web just like JavaScript. If you'd like to follow along, please continue, or if you just want to see the art, I have three galleries in this video. As usual, links are in the description. In this video, I'm going to be experimenting with Rose Curve and the shapes it can generate look like this. You can find more information on Wikipedia. First, let's find out how it will look when animated. I will take out the code that persists what we draw on the canvas so we can see how the curve is drawn. I have set the X and Y already with the Rose Curve formula. Here we are, it looks like this, even Dali looks amazed. Let's see how we can make use of this uh, rose curve in our drawing. Okay, I'm going to put the code back to what it was before. So this time I'm going to use actual pixels from the image, but only part of the time. Here are the functions to extract pixel value and convert it to a JavaScript color. This is how it looks like without image pixels. And now we turn on image pixel drawing. I'm going to remove the reference image on the left so we can focus on the drawing. I've been using these images for a while. Let's find a different set of images. And luckily this website lets you get a random image each time you call it. Okay, great, it works well. Let's get into experimenting. First, I'm going to play with changing some parts of the formula.
these drawings look too pure. I want them to look more like an art than photo. By changing this value, we can set how abstract the drawing would be. Creative coding is about experimenting and some of the experiments work out to give interesting result. Some don't. So here I'm showing these three experiments that worked out reasonably well. In the second experiment, I'm going to use the index of the particle to give an animation effect. So with what we have so far, here's a look at some of the interesting images it generated. Now I'm going to introduce another variable. Here I'm storing the previous x and y values of the particle and later use them to influence its current position. And now we'll look at interesting images from the new experiment.
This is one of my favorites. Okay, one last experiment. This caught me by surprise. It adds a texture to the drawing, more like drawing on a uh, cardboard. And the gallery has a few of my favorites. So hope you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment with your feedback, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. If you like what I create, please support the channel by subscribing.